This episode of The Minimalist is brought to you by nobody, because advertisements suck. The Minimalists. <laughs> hey, Minimizers, welcome to The Minimalist Podcast, where we discuss what it means to live a meaningful life with less. My name is Joshua Fields Milburn. And I'm Ryan Nicodemus, and together we are The Minimalists. So you've started decluttering your physical clutter. Congratulations. It's time to move on. Now, what about all that digital clutter on your computer, your phone, your tablet, and other devices? Is it taking up space on your hard drive? Is it also taking up space in the back of your mind? That's what we're talking about today. We're talking about computer clutter, digital clutter, all of that electronic clutter that is burdening you in your life. We're broadcasting in front of our first ever studio audience today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about them a little bit later in the episode during our Right Here, Right Now segment. We have Danny and Mallory and Emma here, and of course, Podcast Sean and Jordan No More are all here. I think we have to determine nicknames for each person today, or maybe they can let us know in the comments on YouTube. We'll save that for Right Here, Right Now. But first, Ryan, I have this question from Lonnie where she said, what are the benefits of not having digital clutter taking up space in the back of your mind. That question came from our mm. Facebook page. And I want to posit that question back to you, Lonnie, because that's the question. I'm glad you're asking that question because that is the question that makes sense to start with. Mm. Quite often we start with, well, how do I remove the clutter in my life? How do mm. I remove the digital clutter? What digital clutter is appropriate for me? But maybe the best question is, how might my life be better with less? Or in Lonnie's case, what are the benefits of having less digital clutter in my life? Yeah. And the reason you want to ask yourself that is because if I answer that question for you, or if Ryan answers that question for you, well, then you're just going to know the benefits for me mm. or the benefits for Ryan. And we might share some of the same benefits, but ultimately, what are the benefits for you? That's what we want to talk about today in this episode. Ryan, I wanted to start by talking about, I just got this new computer here. Right? Oh, wow. Yeah. Minimalist. You, <laughs> you, you helped me out. Well, my, my last computer, the, it just started typing Y's, which is a strange metaphor. It's like, why? 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 Just randomly. Like, I'd be in the middle of a document. All of a sudden, I look up, and there's like 400 Y's. Y's. And, um, I mean, Ryan and I do try to get to the why of things. Sure. But that was a bit ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And I put up with it for about a year. Random things were happening. It was turning off on its own. Sometimes the space bar would get stuck. Mouse wouldn't work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was many years old. Or the trackpad, I guess. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? It was time for a new computer. It and had so a good run. It did. Yeah. You ordered a new one for me. Yes. And I asked you to order a particular one, gave you the specs. Yep. And... Uh, then you're like, hey, man, they don't have the hard drive size you're looking for. Mm -hmm. they, the one they have in stock right now is the smallest hard drive that they have. Yeah, it was like half of what you were asking. Or maybe even a fourth. Yeah, maybe. And, and so I'm like, okay, cool, that's fine. I'm one of the minimalists. <laughs> I don't need any space. <laughs> and so I, I, well, first off, I got to say, I went into... <laughs> I went into the mall where you had ordered it, mm. and I got that overwhelming. So it was at the Beverly Center. Oh, man. It's even, like, particularly overwhelming when you go in. Yeah, it's like yeah. a fancy mall, right? Yeah. And so I go into the computer store and, and go to pick up the item. I also was getting a computer for Sean at the same time because he had been having problems very similar to mine. Yeah. The planned obsolescence. They're out to get <laughs> us, Ryan. <laughs> I don't think that's what it is. I think our devices, they wear out over time. And, sure. of course, um, we often replace them. Although we have something called the don't upgrade rule, which mm. maybe we can talk about sometime during this episode. Well, you know, it's interesting. When you guys got new computers, I was like, oh, well, this is an excuse for me to get a new computer. That's right. We might as well get new computers all around. The Diderot effect. Yes. But then I talked to myself out of it. So the Diderot effect it usually applies like if you buy something new for your house or a new electronic gadget. Now I need to upgrade everything else. Mm -hmm. Where you know, oh, I just bought this fancy new couch. Mm. Well, now my coffee table looks stupid. Yeah, it just like never uh, ends. Yeah, and and it like kicks off this consumerist cycle. Mm. And I think it's even more pervasive with our electronics oh, because yeah. these things we think need to be replaced more frequently. Yeah, I. I'm not going to lie, like I, 
when I say I look for excuses, I don't really look for excuses, but you know, my impulse is to upgrade whenever something new comes out. Yes. And like, I do look for justifications of like, Oh, you know what? I can go ahead and get an upgraded, whatever. And, uh, yeah, I'm glad I didn't. Cause like the one I have is still works great. It mm-hmm. needs a new battery, but that's not a big deal. Um, but yeah, man, it would have been, it would have been a waste of money. Well, let's talk about that then. So let's, let's take a bit of a detour. So in our new book, it's called love people use things. If you're watching on YouTube, I'll hold up so you can take a look at the cover here, but in love people use things. We have these 16 rules for living with less. You can also download those rules for free over at the minimalists.com slash rule book. You get a free ebook over there as well. One of those rules is the don't upgrade rule. And this applies specifically, it can apply to anything, but specifically to our gadgets and our computers, our smartphones, et cetera. And it's really about that impulse that we get. Every time something new comes out, we see it on a billboard or TV ad or whatever. Now I feel as though I'm not complete without that thing. Mm. And so the don't upgrade rule says, hey, there are three alternatives to upgrading. Number one, and this one is really challenging in our society, it's go without. <laughs> I know, right? Wait a minute. My phone broke. Can I go without it for a day, a week, a month? Maybe not. But maybe there's something else. My TV broke. Yeah, I can probably go without that for a while. Yeah. And it's not to deprive yourself, but it's to, to see, okay, does this actually add value to my life? Mm. The second thing is if you can't go without it, you can rep- you can repair the thing. Mm. So as you talked about with your computer, sometimes it's like, well, I just need a new battery. Yeah. If my the brakes went out on my car, I'd be like, well, I guess I need a new car. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> well, it makes me think of in the corporate days, uh-huh. I literally would go buy a new car every two years because at that two year mark, I'd have to do tires. I'd have to do, you know, all this maintenance. And I would justify and be like, well, it's going to cost me $2,000 to do all this maintenance or I could just get a new car. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, we can justify anything. Yes. What the, the, don't upgrade rule does for us. It helps us realize the absurdity of some of these justifications Mm. that we have in our own lives. And the third thing is if you can't go without, and if it can't be repaired, maybe you ran over your phone in the driveway or whatever, and you need to replace it. Okay. The third option is maybe you can buy something used. Mm. That's the equivalent, or maybe you can even in some cases quote, downgrade. Mm. Because here's another way to think about upgrades. Every upgrade is also in some way a downgrade. Now, here's what I mean by that. By buying this new computer, I upgraded my computer. Mm -hmm. I also downgraded my bank account Mm. in doing that. Well, also your bank account because it was... (laughs) Sorry about that, Ryan. That's all right. (laughs) But so every upgrade that we have in our lives is a downgrade in some other area of our life. What's the quote from Mm -hmm. Thomas Sowell, Podcast Sean? It's, there are no solutions, only Mm trade-offs. And sometimes the trade-off makes sense to give up some money for the thing that is going to serve a purpose in my life, back to buying this computer. So I get it home after the chaotic, terrifying trip to the Beverly Center, Mm -hmm. and it's overwhelming. Of course, every time I go to the Beverly Center, actually, that's the first time since we've lived in Los Angeles I've been there. I've been there one other time. I've gone to the Grove uh, once or twice twice to go see a movie but anytime i go to a shopping mall well you learn that a lot of people know who the minimalists are (laughs) what are the minimalists doing in a shopping mall did you get recognized yeah yeah, like six times i'm waiting in line because they had this huge line outside the store wow because of capacity issues whatever and so i'm waiting in line and people walking by oh hey minimalist what are you buying at the mall <laughs> like i swear i need it i, pro- <laughs> like, I, I feel compelled I'm to picking st- it up for a friend yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh i get that all the time i know i look a lot like him <laughs> uh, but it, yeah. uh, anyway, anyway so i get home with this computer and i you know you do like the transfer you, you can you can move all of your data and photos and files and all this stuff mm-hmm. and i start the the transfer and you know it takes several hours and in the middle of it it just says hey you don't have enough space on this new computer mm-hmm. this can't be these files from your old computer cannot be transferred to your new computer oh wow and so in that moment i i, I got overwhelmed like oh no what am i going to do and then i realized like oh i know what i'm going to do Delete all the porn. <laughs> <laughs> no, Save that a hard drive. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. No, I'm going to start anew. Mm. And so I started with this computer with literally none of my old files. Oh, well, it's freeing in a way, it sounds like. It was so, 
I mean, it's still freeing right now. You realize how little you miss. Now, I'll talk about some of the particulars in this episode. Also, on the Maximal episode this week, we're going to talk about the digital clutter challenge. We're going to give you a bunch of tools for simplifying your digital life. But on this Minimal episode, I thought we'd talk about the freedom of letting go of some of the digital clutter. And we're going to answer some of your questions. Let's start with Emily from Instagram. What do you define as digital clutter? I think first we have to define what clutter is. Clutter yeah. is anything that gets in the way. Right. So clutter for me may not be clutter for you. Uh, and vice versa, right? Right. And so if something is clutter for you right now mm-hmm. or, or clutter for me right now, and it's not clutter for you, it could be clutter for you in the future if it begins to get in the way. Mm -hmm. Now, get in the way of what? Now, it could be it gets in the way of our stuff. If the average American household has hundreds of thousands of items in it, the problem with that is many of those things get in the way of the useful things. Mm -hmm. How many times when we're out on the road or a tour stop or we're talking to people or... And they say, you know what? I had some things that were really useful to me that I forgot I even had because they were hiding Mm. behind the materialistic clutter in my basement or my closet or whatever else. Or I had, I think this is most pronounced in our clothes. You know, when people say, I didn't even remember I had that shirt that I really enjoy because (laughs) it was covered up by all these other shirts that I hate wearing, but I have never let go of. Mm. Well, can't that be true with our digital clutter as well? It is digital clutter only if it gets in the way. Right. And so I, I thought that was an important question to start with because defining what gets in the way, identifying, how do we even know what gets in the way? Well, does it stress you out? Does it feel like a burden? Yeah. Is it preventing you from using certain things in your home? Or is it just weighing on the back of your mind? That's a type of burden as well. That's all clutter. And I don't want to live with clutter. Now, of course, decluttering is not something that you do with respect to the letting go part. The letting go is when you stop holding on to these things. And I think that's really our big problem with, well, with all this digital clutter on the computers, on our phones, wherever else, is we hold on to everything until it gets to that point where it's untenable. Yeah, And, and so... When Ryan, you did your packing party mm-hmm. and you let go of a whole bunch of stuff, but that's not where the decluttering stopped. Mm. It wasn't like, okay, I decluttered once 10, 12 years ago, whenever that was, 2009, mm-hmm. maybe 2010? Yeah. Uh, 2010. Yeah. And so 11 years ago when you did that, actually, wow, it'll be 11 years ago next month. That's crazy. Yeah. And, and so, but that was the start of the process, but it's still about questioning the digital clutter, the physical clutter that you bring in, that you hold on to, and that you let go of. It's a process of questioning the clutter because the things that are useful today might be clutter tomorrow. You can tweet that podcast, Sean. Boom. We have a question here from Twitter. Maria has something for us. Where do we start in addressing digital clutter to ensure we stay focused and motivated and not get overwhelmed with it all? Create folders first and then view every single file to put it in the right folder? Is there a faster method? Feels like we'll be forced to touch each and every file in the process. That is overwhelming, right? Yeah. If if you felt like you had to go to the internet and declutter the internet, I know this is an extreme example, you you couldn't do it. Even even a, a website like Wikipedia, who who has people and volunteers who go through, pour through pages to declutter those pages Mm. and apparently clutter our Wikipedia page. (laughs) Do they? With criticism. (laughs) (laughs) No, um, everyone needs a little criticism, I guess. Yes. Yeah, I suppose so. Or at least some feedback, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, you couldn't declutter the entire internet. And so what's freeing about that is you have access to it without having ownership of it. Mm. And so in a way, The internet enables us, in fact, that's why I didn't need all of the extra storage space on my computer, is I had all of my other stuff backed up onto Dropbox, and we're actually going to talk about a few other photo storage services on the Maximal episode that I think will be helpful for folks, but I just had all my stuff on Dropbox, my email is in the, quote, cloud, you know, Mm -hmm. whether it's Gmail or whatever email service that you use, it's out there. And yes, of course, there's a certain level of trust that you have in these services, but what's more important than that trust? 
It's the not needing any of it. Mm. And that's what I really learned because, yes, let's say I lost all my photos from well, my mom, uh, Ella's childhood photos, mm. all of these things. These things are important to me, mm -hmm. but I also don't need them. Mm. And the moment I don't need them anymore, I actually enjoy them so much more. So yeah. let's get back to Maria's question here. It, I think of in the medical field, we call it palliative care, right? Where you sort of give someone a, um, you ease the symptoms, but you don't cure the cancer, hmm. right? And I mean, that's an extreme example. Mm. But I think sometimes what we're trying to do is ease this, the symptoms of our digital clutter without getting to the root of that digital clutter yeah. in a way. Yeah. Well, again, I mean, the question is, you know, basically, how do I do this and not feel overwhelmed? How do I, you know, declutter digitally and not feel overwhelmed? Here's the thing is like you have spent years and years and years of like building all this up. Mm -hmm. It is overwhelming. Yes. Now, the easy solution is, and I'll never forget that uh, gentleman at one of our tour stops. He's like, man, I've got like... He like even came up to the stage and showed us. He's like, I got these all these saved links. I'm gonna like read these one day. Yeah, he was in that's Dallas. I, yeah, that's what I keep telling myself. And and sometimes I do read them when I'm bored, you know, or I, I have some time. I'll go to those links. But he's like, I add more links than what I actually read. It's kind of like someone who buys more books than what they actually read. <laughs> and I just looked at it. I'm like, you really want my advice? He's like, he's like, yeah. I was like, all right. I'm just gonna put myself in your shoes. I would delete them all. I would delete it right now. In front of everyone. Yeah, and he was like, he was so, like, I don't know, just stopped in his tracks, eyes wide, and he was like, all right, man, I'll do it. And, yeah, he, like, deleted every, and, like, the relief that he had, it was like, his shoulders were even, like, a little looser after yes. he did it. So, you know, I, I just, just, you know, kind of a, an extreme example, Maria, of you could just get rid of it all and yes. start new. But here's the thing is if you do have important digital items, whether it's photos or tax records, which we'll talk a little bit about too here in a little bit. Um, it, it is a lot to filter through, mm -hmm. but that's, that's it though, man. Like minimalism and simplicity, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. It is a lot of work. Yes. It's a lot of calling. It's a lot of, uh, asking yourself questions, introspection. It's, 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 it is a lot of work. So it's okay to feel overwhelmed, mm. but you know, I, you know, if you if you do have to go through some stuff from here, use that overwhelm maybe as some leverage because you don't ever want to feel like this again. Such a good point. Uh, J. Krishnamurti says, "Use your suffering to ease your suffering." Mm. And and so when I think about mm, the overwhelm, that's a type of suffering, right? Yeah. You, mm. It's a it's a low grade suffering mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. And why do we feel overwhelmed? So I'm going to start not with the how-to because she asked for some methods. And we can get to some methods that I think will be helpful. But I'm going to start with the why to why am I so overwhelmed by this stuff? Yeah. Well, it's because I collected this unintentionally over the course of years, years. maybe even decades. Yeah. It, it's Now, the good news is, is it's not going to take you years and decades right. to, to get it in a, in a way that doesn't overwhelm you, but it is going to take more than a day. It's going to be between one day and a decade. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the good news is it's not going to take you more than a month. And, right. and yet right. it's not going to happen today. Most likely either, unless you drop it all and start a new, like I did with this computer. The cool thing about that is I actually didn't have to do anything. Mm. I simply got the computer and I didn't have to do anything. The relief had nothing to do with the doing it had to do with the not doing. Yeah. Because at first, what did I want to do? What is the right system? What's the right method? How do I transfer this? And then how do I go in and declutter these things as well? Right. Well, the quickest way for me to declutter my computer was to start afresh. Mm -hmm. well, whether that's reformatting the whole thing, starting over that way. And then, guess what I have done since then? I've slowly reintroduced things that I had backed up to the cloud that I absolutely needed. Mm -hmm. But only... When I needed them, it was like a packing party for my computer in a way. Oh, wow. Because that's awesome. The truth is, all the stuff's out there, and I know that I'm never going to use most of it, just like the internet. I know I'm never going to use most of it, but I have it backed up in the cloud. And yes, could something happen to it? So at some point in time, of course, just like my favorite website could go down and now I'll no longer have access to that either. That's not a good reason why I better print out the whole website 
and then keep it in a binder. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Could you imagine? <laughs> yes, I can. I have um, OCD, Ryan. <laughs> Oh, dude, I'll tell you what, when I go to YouTube, it is like, I, I avoid YouTube as much as I can. If I go to YouTube, like I, I needed to uh, install, install this um, like hitch on my vehicle. So I research how to install and there's like all this clutter of installing it. And then I'm like, which one? I mean, it's overwhelming. Yes. And so then I just went to my friend and let him do, let him do it. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, it's, it's, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, let alone YouTube, not, not to mention all the other websites out there. Yeah. yeah. Well, Marie, I'm going to talk about some of the actual methods that Ryan and I go through personally, what I've gone through on my new computer, what I go through on my phone as well. We'll talk about those on the Maximal episode this week, patreon.com slash The Minimalist. All right, we got a question here from Daniel in New York City, New York. One area of life and, and a hobby that I've always enjoyed um, is video games. And unfortunately, there is a, a huge financial cost I, that I can see to the hobby itself as a video game for video gaming and everything and for geeks, I guess, in general with that. Um, and as I'm seeking to kind of minimize, minimize and downsize and, and simplify life, um, what, what is a, a good way of approaching that hobby to, to make it a more minimal impact on, on the rest of my life? I, I want to still enjoy it. But I also don't want it to encroach on other areas of my life, such as, importantly, uh, my family. So, Ryan, I know that you play video games from yeah. time to time. And this is exactly what I mean by clutter. This is something that has added value to Daniel's life at some point. And right now, he feels as though that area of his life is cluttered. It's affecting his family. He's it's affecting him. Yeah, he's overwhelmed. Right. Yeah. And so the thing that... He talked about was the financial cost of it. Yeah. Man, I wouldn't be worried about that cost just yet. That's fourth or fifth on your list. <laughs> there are these other costs. It's costing you time and attention and energy and maybe even skills. And that's not to say video games are wrong or bad. They're not. You can certainly enjoy them. But mm -hmm. at some point, that joy, when it turns into discontent, that's when some decluttering needs to take place. Yeah. Ryan, I know you've set up some boundaries for yourself around this. Sure, man. So... Uh, he he mentioned costs, and I will talk about that because it's you pay money for your games, mm -hmm. so it's like that's a the low hanging fruit of like, well, I can't throw away that game because I, I paid money for it. Oh, a lot the of these games, cost. yeah, a lot of these games are like fifty, sixty dollars. Even worse, there are games in the past that I've purchased that are now free. That there's, I would never get the money back regardless because now you can get it, you can get the game for free. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, you said sunk cost, and that's exactly what I would encourage uh, Daniel to look at. These games that you spent sixty bucks on, that's fine. There's, you don't need to feel guilty about spending the money because um, that guilt is basically keeping him from letting go. Mm -hmm. So and then the way to let go for me, like I have, uh, you know, I got like my gaming console. We're not sponsored by any mm -hmm. gaming console, so I won't mention what it is. But it has like a limit of space on there. Oh, okay. Now I can go buy bigger hard drives and create more space uh -huh. and have all the video games I want. But I don't. I just have that one storage that's in my video game. And uh, yeah, I mean, I had, I had a game that I was playing that I never finished. And then my cousin calls me up. He's like, hey, man, we should start playing, you know, whatever. And I'm like, okay. So I go, to, I go to download this new game, and it's like, you don't have room. So now I'm faced with a choice of like, okay, which game am I going to get rid of? And it was eating at me. I'm like, well, you haven't even finished this one game. Uh -huh. And I'm like, what am I doing? Like, I just, I got rid of it. It was, uh, it was uh, 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 San Andreas, oh, man, uh, Grand Theft Auto. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, so I, I deleted it. And the beautiful thing is, is like when you, when you buy the video games, especially because now you can buy them in the cloud, you don't have to buy the discs anymore. Right. So I purchased that. If I ever want to go back to it, I can cert I have access to it. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so with respect to, to gaming, and I think the real cost that he's dealing with, and a lot of people who become addicted to mm -hmm. playing video games is it's their time. It, mm. There's only 24 hours in a day. And we see the most exaggerated examples of this, right? Where we have someone who is... Yeah, putting a diaper on and playing for 18 hours a day. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's really what I would suggest Daniel look at is like, what is it costing you? Uh, going back to that term of clutter, what are the video games getting in the way of? 
Mm. If you know, if it's if it's uh, contention between you and your spouse, like if Mariah was like, you know, uh, you spend too much time on video games, and I would either get rid of the video games or I'd be like, okay, well, you know, what can I, you know, what can I do for you mm -hmm. to help you feel like I love you and 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 I pay attention to you, whatever it is. I mean, luckily, like she's she's like the coolest woman I've ever had who is totally like. Play, play your video games. <laughs> <laughs> right. But or in the past, it, it has been a point of contention. Right. And yeah. it's a point of contention because of two things. One is expectation. Yeah. Someone else's expectation. I was with LL last night, and I told her that her, uh, ex her expectations... Uh, or her happiness was moderated by her expectations. And she looked at me, she goes, I don't even want to know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I'm eight. Yeah, and, and, and yet, so we have expectations of other people. Those things often make us miserable. Mm -hmm. But also the point of contention is this might not be the best use of my time. And I think right. sometimes we know that we're doing the easy thing mm -hmm. and we're first forsaking the important thing. So in Love People Use Things, our new book, for example, we have these six questions to ask before buying something. Mm -hmm. But one of those questions is, is this the best use of my money? Or another way to put that is, is this the best use of this resource? Right. What is one of your other resources? Well, we have five main resources that we use on a daily basis. It's time, attention, energy, skills, and money. Mm -hmm. And so it actually spells an acronym, TEAMS. We don't put money first because then it'd be meats. <laughs> <laughs> what is this, Arby's? <laughs> and, no. and so how are you using the time? Is this, yes, maybe you're getting value from the video games. Mm -hmm. If you're feeling discontent by it though, maybe it's because, well... I don't feel like this is the best use of my time right now. Yeah. And other times, if you have an hour to spare, it could be the best use of that time sure. to, quote, decompress or to share an experience with someone else. I mean, yeah. I, quite often, uh, there's a connection, especially now with video games, because yeah. you're connecting with people who you know, or in some cases, people you've never even met. Yeah. But it's that sense of connection, and it's creating a, a sort of community or a type of community, sometimes a faux community. Mm -hmm. And it, it all of a sudden... You know, they say that connection is the antidote to addiction, mm. right? Well, maybe if we feel addicted to the video game, it's because we're not connected to enough people in, in our own lives. Yeah, I love the, that you brought up the rules because as I'm sitting here going through the, the 16 rules we have, a lot of those can be applied to video games. The mm. seasonality rule, yeah. the, uh, the 2020 rule, especially if like you already have the game mm -hmm. in the cloud, you can... In less than 20 minutes, you can start downloading it again for free for less than $20. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Daniel, take a look at those 16 rules because that's really what it is about, setting up boundaries, and those are going to be highly perspectival. And if it's contention with your wife, talk to your wife about setting up those boundaries. Mm, yeah, you can set up some boundaries together, not boundaries that are restrictive. In fact, in a few weeks, we're going to talk about some of the boundaries. Since we have some new folks we're working with now, we've set up some boundaries here in the workplace because some boundaries increase our tranquility, increase mm. our freedom. We're going to talk about 25 different boundaries that Ryan and I have set up in our own lives individually or together with, with the business as well. We're going to talk about that in a few weeks on one of the Maximal episodes, really dive deep. But Daniel, I would love to see you in New York City. Yeah, That event is getting ready to sell out pretty soon. We're coming to 20 different cities across the United States and Canada. We're going to start out in Texas. We'll be in San Antonio and Houston and Dallas, and then we're going to be in Nashville and Orlando and Atlanta and Phoenix and Denver and Salt Lake City. I'm doing this off the top of my head here. Boston and, and New York City and then D.C. and Toronto and Chicago and Minneapolis. Columbus will be back in Ohio finally. Um, did I say Chicago already? Uh, we'll be in Vancouver and Seattle and Los Angeles and San Francisco and several other places. TheMinimalists.com slash tour. Podcast Sean, if you could reach out to Daniel and give him a couple tickets to that New York City event before it sells out. Anyone else wants to get their tickets? TheMinimalists.com slash tour. Ryan, what time is it? You know what time it is. It's time for the lightning round where we answer your text messages. You can text your questions and comments to 937-202-4654. Yes, indeed. Send us a text message. Let us know what kind of digital clutter you're letting go of this week. Ryan and I, 
I, we actually get those texts to both of our phones. We use this app called Community where it sends texts to us. We respond to as many people as we can. We even respond to some folks here on the podcast. Now, during the lightning round, so Ryan and I do our best to answer questions with a short, shareable, less than 140 character response. We put the text to these minimal maxims in the show notes so you can copy and share our pithy answers on social media if you'd like. And now you can find all of our minimal maxims in one place, minimalmaxims.com. Yeah. Carly has a question. How about a basic overview of how to manage it all? Emails, documents, photos. It's overwhelming. <laughs> well, we will dive deep on the maximal this week on some specific methods and how-tos. Let's understand the why to first. Mm. Now, I alluded to this earlier, but here's my pithy answer for you. Doing less is not about the doing. It's about the less. Mm. And I found that out viscerally with this new computer. And it was so freeing because I didn't have to do, and, and I was dreading it. In fact, I remember right after I brought the computer home, you asked me, Ryan, I didn't set it up for close to a week. And you were asking, how's the new computer? I'm like, I don't know. And it's because I was afraid of what? Everything I had to do mm. with the computer. And it turns out I didn't have to do anything except turn it on. <laughs> and, and when That's you great, remove man. all of the excess doing, then there's a type of being, and it's so much less overwhelming. You got yeah. something pithy for us? For sure. Uh, you know, I got the first one I have here is Henry David Thoreau. Uh, it's, it, it is, wait, yeah. It is not enough to be busy. So are the ants. <laughs> yes. The question is, what are we busy about? And that, that's the first thing that came to mind because emails and documents and photos and I always have to do, 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 do. And I have all this available to me. So, you know, I must uh, manage it appropriately and use it as much as possible, but I don't want to use it too much. I mean, why are you doing it? Yeah. That's, that's really the question. My pithy answer here, the second one I have here is when in doubt, go without. So, you know, kind of going back to the should I upgrade rule. Uh -huh. Just go without it for a little bit. See how it goes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and so when you're looking at any of these things, Carolee, whether it's email, documents, photos, what is the reason that it's so overwhelming? It's taxing you, I get it. And yes, there are ways to organize and, and mm -hmm. file things away. I'm going to talk about some of those. But the, the thing that I want to understand is what is overwhelming me and can I actually do without it? You know what, man? I... Uh so, you know, I was having like an email issue and I literally at a certain point, I was like, I'm just going to send an email to everyone who's important and say, I am no longer using email. Send me a text or call me if you need anything. Uh, I did not, but I mean, it wasn't that radical of an idea. Like at the time, oh. cause I was getting so frustrated with it. Right. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, if, if email stressing you out, see what it's like to go without it for a little bit. You can always bring it back into your life. These things are incredibly valuable to us, right, until they're not. Mm -hmm. And so if email is something that is a tool for you that's not overwhelming you, great. Yeah. If it begins to overwhelm you, well, then that is a sign that it is being used in a way that exceeds the my expectations or my expectations exceed my capabilities here yeah. right and so overwhelm is a sign it's a sign of what that we need to let go of something mm. a new management system alone is not going to help you out in fact there's a great chance it's going to make you more stressed more suffering what did mm. we say earlier ryan use your suffering to ease your suffering well what does that mean it means that if you're suffering so much you get tired of the suffering you get tired of the overwhelm mm. and if you are fed up with the overwhelm it doesn't matter what system you use if you're truly overwhelmed sometimes the best thing to do is simply walk away because as you said earlier, with the video games, with email, with anything else, you can always walk back to it, yeah. if it and use it differently. Once you've removed it from your life for a period of time, you can use it, reintroduce it in a way mm. that adds value to your life. Totally. We got a bunch more to talk about, right? Including some Danny and, and Emma and Mallory. I've got an awesome added value this week, but you got something for us first, right? Yeah, man. Here's some voicemail comments and insights from our listeners. Check them out. Hi, my name is Catherine. I currently live in the Bay Area, and I was calling to comment on your episode three, which talks about children and what I do with my children that helps. Every 
um, first week of December um, with clutter. My children go through all of their toys, and we wash them, we clean them, we put them in cute little bags, and then we donate them to centers around our community. And they love acting like Santa and sharing their toys and stuff. And it gives us kind of that pre-Christmas purge period. Um, also, we have we live in an RV full time, and so having that limited of space has definitely helped us with the grandparents and that kind of stuff. With they give us more experiences than stuff, since they know we just physically don't have room. Hello, Josh. Hello, Ryan. My name is Sandra, and I currently live in Zurich, Switzerland. I want to recommend the books that might hopefully bring a lot of inspiration to you and your listeners. In my profession as a designer, I have found myself often challenged with the consumption-oriented mindset of the industry, and although I work in publishing, mostly designing books, I would still find myself often wishing that I could bring more of a positive change into this world with my work, but I never really knew how. Then I found a book called The Little Red Book about how to make design matter by David Carlson, and it inspired me so much that I decided to share it with you. In my opinion, any person, designer or not, can find value in it because it encourages the reader to make their work more meaningful and it guides you with simple, inspiring examples. I really can't express enough how much this book has changed for me, has, has made a change for me and how excited I now feel to make all the ideas happen. All right, y'all, we got a bunch more surprise questions this Thursday on Patreon. That's the maximal episode on the Minimalist Private Podcast. It's way longer than this. We do one hour, sometimes two hours, sometimes three plus hours. Only if TK's here. <laughs> well, quite often we do. We do an hour and a half, two hours. We really dive deep into some stuff. But first, real quick, right here, right now, here's one thing, or maybe two things going on, or three things going on in the life of The Minimalist. We're expanding our team. Last week, you met Danny Unknown. Like I said, we they each have to have a... That's his, his social media handle, so I didn't okay. make that up for him. Isn't it strange that we have Jordan No More and Danny Unknown both on the team? <laughs> And, of course, we have Podcast Sean, which some lovely listener came up with early on yeah. into the podcast. Because we were always referring to Sean, and someone sent him an email and just called him Podcast Sean. And yeah. it has stuck ever since. Yeah. And now we have Mallory and Emma. Emma, the immigrant. I'm not really sure what to, <laughs> to call her. We, we, we don't have a, a perfect nickname for her yet. Let us know on YouTube. But the Mallory's from Alabama, so I don't know if it's Malabama or... Or, or Malabama. something. Oh, that's good. I like that. Oh, that's good. I just well, wish they could all be named Sean. <laughs> that'd be easy. So we work with two Seans, right? right? Yeah. You know, it was fascinating. We had our first team meeting with them. We don't call it a team meeting. We were, uh, we actually called a joy committee. Mm. Big shout out to Millie who had applied for one of uh, these positions. She was awesome and we just couldn't hire everyone that we yeah. loved. Yeah. And um, she talked about doing these joy committees at her job. She, awesome. she set it up. And I'm like, yeah. oh, that's what I want because we want... I hate meetings, but I love joy. And so it's, oh. it's kind of like packing up my stuff. I hate packing up stuff, but you put party on it. Right. <laughs> it's awesome. How could it, it be a joy party? Ooh. Ryan will definitely be there. He shows up with like a case under each arm <laughs> of sparkling water. Yes. Um, anyway, so we have, we're expanding the team and it was fascinating. We were doing this meeting and I, I made a list of everyone who's like direct, who's on the immediate team. And then we have an expanded team with like Jeff and Dave and, mm -hmm. and, and other folks we work with regularly, uh, Alan and Andrew and Sarah. And, and I realized like, oh my gosh. The minimalist is like 31 people at this point. It's crazy. And, uh, or at least 25 of people we work with regularly, right? And then we have a couple of side businesses as well, like Minimalism Life and our coffee shop down in, in Florida. If you counted all the people that work at the coffee shop, it, that'd be really crazy. But yeah. um, what's fascinating is Ryan and I have had the opportunity to be the face of this thing. But it's really about the people who help us share this message because... Ryan has said recently that we're not in the advice business. We're in the healing business. And what I've really learned over the last decade is a lot of people have a unfortunate or tumultuous or just overwhelming relationship with stuff. And so for us, minimalism starts with healing that relationship with stuff so we can re really heal our relationship with ourselves. So Danny and Mallory and Emma are here to help us heal people and their relationship with stuff mm. welcome aboard y'all yeah 
All right. Well, we've got an added value segment today. Oh, before we get into the added value, Ryan, um, since we are talking about digital clutter, we've got this thing over at minimalist.org, which is our free local meetup groups. We have 100 different meetup groups, Mm -hmm. eight different countries. And uh, we also have an online city. So if you don't have, you know, if you live in the middle of nowhere in Portugal, we may not have a, a group right next to you, but we have this online city with, I don't know, 14,000 people in it who all just interact with each other. It's all free, minimalist.org. But this month, because we had our, our new book come out last month, Love People Use Things, we have this challenge on there, the Love People Use Things Challenge. And there are a few things on here I wanted to highlight. So the first 10 days of the month, this month, we did a digital declutter challenge. I'll give you a few examples of those. How many photos do you have on your phone? If you wanted to reflect back on your meaningful memories, would it be a beautiful experience or an overwelming task? Today, we're challenging you to go through your phone and delete 100 photos or consider deleting 1,000 photos in the next 11 days. And there's a link to an article in there as well. There are a few other challenges in here. Deleting 10% of the apps on your phone today. How will that make you feel? Which ones truly add value to your life? We have another one, screenless Saturdays. That's always something that's helpful. Three different ways to embrace screenless Saturdays. So you can find that over at minimalist.org, the online city over there. For added value this week, Ryan, sometimes it feels like life gets crazy. (laughs) We get overwhelmed and we always look back to, oh, remember when it was so much simpler. How many times do people come up to us at our tour stops or on the road and they're like, I remember when everything I owned could fit in my car and I was so much happier then. But then, of course, life got crazy. (laughs) So let's play with a song. This is from Mike, his new album, which is called The Highs. The song is called... Life got crazy. It's a perfect reminder that life gets crazy when we overcomplicate things. Mm. By the way, we have a bunch more surprise questions this week, like how do I determine which smartphone apps to delete? What are the best ways to curate and store my physical photographs? How do I declutter the duplicate photos on my smartphone? What should I do with my old DVDs and CDs? Can I just toss my dead batteries in the trash? Ryan, the answer to this is going to surprise you. It certainly shocked me. Mm. The answer from the Forest Service, it's a bit nuanced, though. So we'll talk about what to do with dead batteries. I'm a little shocked. I'm still a little trepidatious right now. Plus, we've got nine things you can do with old computers and other electronic devices. And, of course, a million more questions for the minimalists. And if you want to hear all that, join us on the Minimalist Private Podcast this week. Visit patreon.com slash the minimalist to subscribe and get your personal link so that our private podcast plays in your favorite podcast app. You also get access to recordings of our live events, to our archives, hundreds of hours of minimalism, our Ask the Minimalist Anything sessions, and our Patreon community. You can follow The Minimalist on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at The Minimalists. Come to one of our live podcast shows. Visit theminimalists.com slash tour to find a city near you. If you have a question, comment, or minimalism tip for our podcast, email a voice memo to podcast at theminimalists.com. You can comment on this episode at youtube.com slash theminimalist. And if you want our show notes in your inbox, sign up for our email list over at the minimalists.com. You'll also receive our simple Sunday emails whenever we send those out. And if you leave here today with just one message, let it be this. Love people and use things because the opposite never works. Thanks for listening, y'all. We'll see you next time. Every little thing you think that you need Every little thing you think that you need Every little thing that's just feeding your greed Oh, I bet that you'll be fine without it